CS183 Lecture 8 is about priming the pump. Now, if you've gone through lectures 1 through 7, uh, you've got to sell something. And this is the, the lecture that's going to get you over the hump if you yourself have not sold anything yet. So if you have sold something, mentor somebody who hasn't. If you have not sold something, this is going to, to pop your cherry. This is going to get you your first sale. And as much as you hate the thought of thinking about selling something and the inertia of it, this lecture will help you completely get over it and you'll actually benefit those in the community as well because you're gonna be using your sales effort for the general and greater good. Practice selling merchants donated items. So let's say there's an existing event, uh, you're going to sell merchants on donating an hour of accounting services or carpet or a restaurant can do a $50 gift certificate donated. Now these donated items don't cost the merchant a full price and this will help you close the deal where you're going to feel great after getting X amount of donation uh, donated to an event and that'll be, that'll constitute your first sale. Closing your first deal for cash money, even though it's a small amount, 50 bucks, 200 bucks, thousand dollars, still con has friction to it. So what you're gonna do to get over this friction or an option for you is to barter. Barter is you, where you swap services for product. Barter, B-A-R-T-E-R. So what you can do is you can close a deal, not necessarily for cash, but for barter. So an example of this would be doing a restaurant website. Majority of websites in my town, which is not super tech savvy Palo Alto, not even joking, less than 50% of 50% of restaurants have a website. So if you're from, you know, Podunk, uh, Champaign, Urbana, it might be 80% of restaurants don't have a website. So barter. Doing sales for your, grab a pen, less than minimum viable party, LTMVP, less than minimum viable party. So you're gonna be selling sponsorships, uh, and if you sold something already, this is even better because now you can sell sponsorships to cover the cost of your event, of your less than minimum viable party. It's an 11 minute party, it's hashtag LTMVP. There are protocols on the checklist of things that you need to execute. So when you're selling for your, your party, the same principles for selling an 11 minute party apply to when you're selling larger items. So remember, this is the whole thing is to prime the pump and to do things that don't scale. So selling a party and producing a party is immensely difficult and challenging, but will have hidden momentum and it'll help you build your promotion. I've edited a YouTube video on how to produce a less than minimum viable party. But basically you wanna have your Eventbrite linked to your PlanCast, linked to your YouTube, where you tweet an FB update, Facebook update, and also do a slide share. So according to, uh, social media and uh, you're documenting, documenting the event, an 11 minute party has very little distinction between uh, an 11 minute party and a $30,000 open bar party because on the internet, nobody can tell if your party was 11 minutes long or two hours long so long as you do that EUTWM PPM. Engineer up a tidal wave of momentum, per perpetual promotion machine, under LTMVP, less than minimum viable party. Why would you do an 11 minute party? You're doing an 11 minute party because people in Palo Alto want to meet up before they go to Sundance Film Festival. And so it starts as an 11 minute party and then it kind of builds, but it doesn't even have to build because you can just initially do a networking event in your home city, I live in Palo Alto, to the future city, which is Sundance Park City, Utah, Sundance Film Festival. So you're doing a pre-party pre-promotion and you're priming the pump because you're giving, in essence, PR and publicity to the Sundance Film Festival. Or you're giving PR, uh, public relations, momentum and juice from doing an event in your local city before you jet off to that future city. Example of a pre-roll is when you do a San Francisco event 
before an Austin event. So San Francisco, January 18th, 2016 is going to be a uh, goal setting party to get your return on investment. That's going to be at the St. Regis and also at the Hyatt. And that is a Monday and it's before the film festival music and interactive called South by Southwest. So that takes place in Austin in March. We are going to be meeting up and doing an event January 18th. So it pre-rolls and pre-promotes and you're priming the pump by simultaneously helping a conference in the future while also helping yourselves do something now and that's what priming the pump's about. Party promotion in Rose Bowl before uh, the night before, which is New Year's Eve. So 2013, there's a Rose Bowl. And the night before is 1231-2012. So doing a party with no downside, just upside, where it's not 11 minutes long, but it's a party where you don't have to rent out the venue speculatively. You can just charge people to come in the door and then split future door sales. So you don't have to take on a burden, you're only selling revenue. And that's what selling something in existence does, is it helps you build and practice uh, selling something that's gonna happen anyway because it's a New Year's Eve party. When I say the word and phrase paloaltodelivery.com, what thoughts come to mind? Well, that's how DoorDash started because it leveraged the fact that a lot of Palo Alto restaurants did not have a website. So it loaded up menus and it sold menus by taking a picture of a menu and then putting it on paloaltodelivery.com. This isn't a personal relationship with Stanley Tang that I'm quoting from. This is CS183, B as in boy, I think lecture number eight, where Stanley Tang talks about doing things that don't scale, parentheses, but have momentum. So the practice of helping a restaurant and selling one thing to a restaurant really helps you too build something be the umpteenth time that I'm presenting to you DTTDSBHM. Do things that don't scale but have momentum. Do things that don't scale but have momentum. There's the preview lecture for it is this lecture and you want to grab a pen. It's just Google the phrase CS183 B as in boy lecture number eight where it's all about uh, doing things that don't scale, basically selling and promoting. So these things are so difficult to do, which is why we're at lecture eight, and hopefully you have sold at least one thing by now. Have you? Text me, email me. Pay incredibly close attention to the fact that there's a but has momentum portion to DTTDS, do things that don't scale. And what it is is when Initially, your brain can't fathom the fact that it's so hard to do that you come up with a million excuses. And one of the great excuses of, well, it's not gonna scale, I don't wanna do it. But something very magical happens in the BHM portion of DTTDS BHM. Do things that don't scale, but have momentum. Once you sell a couple things, people start selling each other. And if you can't find a salesperson for an app, this is Peter Thiel, uh, Lecture 9, CS183. Lecture nine, which is if you can't find the salesperson, you're the salesperson. So DTTDS BHM. This is something that's very karmically awesome, which is if you're a CS major, promote a future movie opening. Let me repeat that. Promote a future movie opening. Doesn't really help you, but it helps you just sell a movie. So you can sell a futures to a ticket by selling something for $10, that's a $14 placeholder for the future. So you're promoting, you're literally trying to, to gather up your friends uh, and watch a future movie by getting them to put down a little bit of money right now. So that's a movie promotion. And you're selling something that exists. So this movie's gonna launch regardless of whether or not you put effort into it. So sell a movie as practice.